Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and today we're going to be doing a doing a viewer request. This one came in on my Discord actually from a viewer named Mercurus, who actually managed to win their first run after after it looks like probably 40 plus total attempts. So yeah, this is not a game that's that's easy to win on your first go. So. Kudos to you for finding something that works. This this particular setup doesn't quite fit what I normally like, and I will explain why throughout the run. But it's still a fair enough run, and we'll have some fun with it. So let's quick go over it. So Mercurius won this first run by basically using the using a fueled berserk setup. So we've obviously got that doing stone shot. So we've basically got just. A machine gun going on here. Wave front for additional range damage and shielding. And magnetic breakers, which I have to assume is also about just crowd control and damage, but. <clears throat> yeah. And then Claws of Tomo to make sure that this is upgraded immediately from the beginning. The Grit Rope was used because they're, because according to Mercurius, they're not that good at dodging damage, and they just wanted to make sure that everything was on the up and up. Basically, the increased health and the armor were there to try to mitigate some of the incoming damage. Which I get, I understand. For a build like this that pretty much is going to be requiring you to stand still and keep enemies off your back, I can understand. Let's see. Alright, let's start at Atlas. Come on. Who really wants me to start the Thunder and Keep? Holy crap. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so some of the things that I'm noticing about this build that I would that I would do a little bit differently were I the one choosing everything. First of all, I think just for me personally, instead of Claws of Tomo, I probably would have gone Captain's Ring. The reason being is because you've got you've got one Oh hello. Right, we've got ourselves a very interesting start here. Okay, that was not that was a complete mistake. Basically, I went to cast the spell and my thumb went whoops and slipped upwards. So there you go, fun times for me! Alright, I might grab Electrifying Smog, but I also want to see what Iris has for sale, so we'll come back to that. But yeah, you're starting with one arcana of differing elements just throughout, uh, throughout your build. Captain's Ring would have been an easy 12% bonus to your damage, which doesn't seem like much, but even if you're, so each stone is being taken from 8 damage to 9 damage, that's still an additional 6 damage throughout the entirety of the combo. Not to mention that, that there's always still the possibility of critical hits. That large of a room and only three ghouls in it? 
I accept. I am good with those terms. Hmm. Oh, hurt me. Alright. The other thing I would do is I would probably switch up the robe. That's a that's a personal preference thing, and I get it. The idea was you weren't comfortable with how much damage you were taking, so you wanted so you picked up a robe that would be a little bit more forgiving for you. That I completely understand. It's, it's one of the things I really like about this game is that there are options out there for every type of player. If you wanted something to help mitigate damage, hey, there's a robe for that. I personally like something that augments my damage a bit more. There is not necessarily a right or a wrong answer, I'm simply, simply stating what my preference is would have been. Here we go. So that could be worth it. Alright, so what I want to do is I'm going to drop this. Now I'm going to go find Iris and see if she sells me the Stone Shot upgrade. Because if she does, then that's an easy one for, for the Mimic. And yeah, don't worry about how much damage you're taking, because one of the things that you're going to... Okay, so no, we're going to be keeping that then. I also very much want to hold on to the token of health. because that's going to be useful for later on. I can, however, just grab a couple of cheapos. <laughs> and there we go. Extra 15% damage, and all it cost was a few hundred gold. Now, I know you're only allowed to start with one relic, but the other, another starting relic that I would recommend for this build would be Demi's Teapot to increase the amount of time you have with Fuel Preserve. Now, that one's not super important, because one of the things that... Because one of the things that I've been noticing is that... Fuel Berserk seems to it seems to last long enough for most encounters. That's so that's one of those things that's really just there as kind of like a comfort recommendation. But I think Captain's Ring is definitely a good start for this build. I mean this build is perfect for Captain. I see something there I very much like. All right, see multiple things there I very much like. And since right now our leg up is in power, <sighs> so I'm thinking about it and I think where I would want to, where I want to go, is probably to Inferno Cannon. 
and I will explain why as I continue to march through Atlas's lovely little court area here. The reasoning is because of our next two is because of our next two opponents. But, I mean, I think that is precisely why they wanted to hang on to the Grit Robe. It's because while you're focusing on just locking down an enemy, sometimes you do get caught by surprise, and... Well, unfortunately, we don't all like surprises. And when I say that, I mean, like, most of us don't like that kind of surprise. I see Dice of the Nemesis, and I like it. We're outputting very frequent hits, and something like Dice of the Nemesis would definitely be a bona fide leg up. Now, you had also mentioned that you wanted to try doing this run with the Shift Robe at some point once you had gotten a little bit better at the game and, you know, reading enemy patterns and all that, because that's what it really boils down to, is reading enemy patterns. And... Do I think that the Shift Robe would be good for this? Again, if you feel you need a defensive leg up, the occasional... The occasional evade is nice, but... If you're taking the Shift Robe, you're probably taking it for the improved critical hit chance. And just for my money, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get more critical hit chances off of the, off of the Aw Robe. But I mean, Aw Robe is one of the like top two robes in the game, so it should come as no surprise that that makes my recommendation list. Hello. But I'd also like to point out that it's that it's really only top tier once you re once you really know how to avoid avoid damage because it's not doing anything to mitigate the damage that you take. You just have to be you know good. You know, unlike me apparently. Now, and again, I will go out of my way to praise the devs of this game for designing for designing systems that are good for players of all skill levels and experience. Because you have robes that are really good for those who are good at avoiding damage. You've got robes that are good for players that are just kind of eh. And ooh, elixir of might. Oh, you've just made my day. Alright, still thinking Dice of the Nemesis. Alright, so now allow me to go back to what I was saying earlier and explain why I'm thinking I want to take Inferno Cannon instead of Tidal Blast. And don't get me wrong, Tidal Blast is friggin' great. I love Tidal Blast, but if we look at the elemental resistances of the enemies we have coming up, the the Wonder Twins and, and Shu the Air Monkey. <clears throat> The Wonder Twins are going to take less damage from Tidal Blast overall, and Shu is going to take normal damage from Tidal Blast, whereas the Wonder Twins are going to take normal damage from Inferno Cannon, and then Shu is going to take enhanced damage from Inferno Cannon. So if you ask me, this is just an easy choice. But that's only looking at things from the realm of from the from the realm of of elemental resistances. 
that doesn't necessarily have to be your only deciding factor. That's just the factor that I chose. Because it does open up possibilities, I'll grab the supply crate. <laughs> now, another thing that's another thing that I've talked about previously in other videos is why I tend to why I tend to not prefer taking magnetic breakers if at all possible. Oh, I suck. And a lot of my reasoning is just boils down to how effective it is on bosses. Actually, that's not true. Even though I'm not a big fan of how it works against bosses, the real crux of the case is how it works is how it works in most situations. So, magnetic breakers was clearly designed as a get off me option because of its high knockback and the idea that it just keeps pushing enemies as it goes. The problem is in enclosed spaces. Magnetic Breakers will tend to essentially cancel itself out. Hello, Bouncing Blaze. Now, I'm going to stick with the build as it is, even though, even though a bouncing, even though Fueled Berserk Bouncing Blaze sounds like an interesting combination of abilities, I'm sticking with what I, with what we have because this is, this is what the, this is what our buddy said, so I'm sticking with it. Okay, so... I may come back to enhance the Bolt Claymore, but I'm not going to lie, that is kind of low priority. Here's an X room. So, Magnetic Breakers, to me, is one of those very, one of those very inconsistent spells. It tends to cancel itself out easily if you use it in a somewhat confined space, which I find to be a real issue because if I'm... Yeah, as you can see there, it would have been perfect for me. God damn it, game. Okay, yeah, this room is awful. Like, it should come as no surprise that elemental enemies tend to be the stronger ones. And just having your entire room just be nothing but them, ugh, it's painful. Not only that, but it's an entire room of them plus cram packed with a bunch of just other enemies. It's like, ugh, no thank you. And one of them is a summoner, so constant seekers and lightning bolt agents. Like, that room was designed to just ruin your self-confidence. 
So maybe now I can... Oh, hold on. Easy room. So, to me, Magnetic Breakers is somewhat unreliable, and against enemies that don't suffer a lot of knockback, it just ends up falling short. Now, if all you were really looking for was crowd control, which it seems like that might have been the case because you have... Because you have plenty of things that are working that are working for you for single target damage, and when I say that I mean lots of rocks, then that makes sense, but it's also something I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to put on as a signature. Like hopefully that makes sense. Like I just don't think it's worthwhile as as a signature. You probably could have gotten plenty of crowd control out of something like Yeah, I saw that coming. Out of something like Blazing Lariat and still had something that works well for single target damage as well. Alright. Then because we're going to switch back to Bolt Claymore later, I'm going to take that. is giving me all sorts of rooms that I absolutely hate. Okay, so I can I see a couple of things here that are pretty high priority. Namely Glove of Midas, although that one is less that one is less of a room, less of a priority in compared to analytical monocle. Analytical monocle is alright, you see what I mean by how inconsistent it can be? If you're, like, even a pixel too close to a wall, the spell's just like, no, I couldn't possibly, I don't know, I can't, I can't, I don't have enough room. Oh my god. Okay, so that's just a series of rooms just designed to destroy you. Like, holy crap, that was not fun. And unfortunately, it's a room that really shows its weaknesses when you're using when you're using magnetic breakers as your signature. Okay, I sucked that one up. What am I looking at? Fire Breath? I don't know, do I like that better than Inferno Cannon? I don't think I do. But I think which one I take may also depend on... Might also depend on what is actually upgradable by the time I'm out of here. If I don't find the Inferno Cannon upgrade, I might just take that.
So because it because it is uh, such an unreliable arcana and the and the signature doesn't really do much to alter its use. I am thinking regenerative meat well would definitely be a good thing to have out now. Not too surprisingly, we have we have no upgrade for Inferno Cannon. On the other hand, upgrade to Dragon Heart might not be a bad idea since we have kind of a hybrid critical power build going. It's also something that can attack attack at range, which is a definite benefit. Now, before I go too far. Let's go take care of the things that I said were going to be important. Namely, you. And how much of the floor do we have left? I think we have like probably two, maybe three battle rooms and the boss. If I grab Glove of Midas now, I should be able to afford Dragon Arc by the end of the floor. And a treasure chest, that helps. Teddy bear face. I mean, I'm okay going through the trials looking like a bear. Are you guys okay with that? Oh, and now Aqua Beam shows up? And you drive a hard bargain. But, I'm sticking with what I got. I think it'll be more effective. Is it shocking that I made it this far, really? Now see, that's why I'm not too worried about the Thunder Twins. Because you've got a basic that's that suits their elements, that suits their elements, and yeah, there we go, that was easy. Grasping Earth? How about no? Now we're going to switch Dragon Blast for Molt Claymore. And it's, in this case, it's not even just for elemental resistance reasons. In this case, it's also because enemies, enemies, the elemental enemies on this floor aren't going to be affected by slow. So in this case, it's just a little bit more multifaceted.
So allow me to kind of explain explain what I'm looking for in a signature arcana, because there are times in which I imagine that my criteria can be a little confusing. When I look for what I look for in a signature arcana is well first of all, if it's a spell I'm going to be working with throughout the entire game, then I'm hoping it's going to be it's going to be somewhat, something that's somewhat, somewhat effective for the, for what I'm going to be facing, as well as the rest of my build. Now, the other thing is, once it gets to the actual signature, I want to I need to know that it's going to be something that's going to really focus down hard. Like there are plenty of ways to deal with crowds. So, a signature that really focuses on crowd control, to me, doesn't seem like it's all that useful. Which is why signatures like the one we have here, again, I'm not trying to be offensive, please don't take it that way. <clears throat> and also, like, rebounding icicles. Those are, those are spells that rely heavily on enemies being affected by by knockback, bosses and larger enemies don't suffer knockback, they just don't. So, those spells that rely heavily on knockback to get the job done are only useful against books. And if something is really only useful against books, then it's then to me it has no right being in the signature spot. Your signature spell should be capable of ta of taking care of lots of things. So that's why I like to look at signature spells that are either good against both, or if I or if I can't have that because my build requires something different, then I like to go with signature spells that are really good at focusing down damage on a single target. But some examples of some of my favorite signatures, and I know that people tend to disagree with my with my choices in this, but I really like I really like Blazing Lariat and Tracer Barrage. At least as far as fire elemental ones are concerned. There are others in other elements, but I'm using those as the examples because they are essentially first two signatures I, I had when I was playing the game through for the first time. And obviously one of them is going to be more power focused thanks to stronger single hits. The other one is going to be slightly better for... Knock it all over. No, I don't think I need anything from Nocturne Cardist. Oh, oh, pardon me. It's funny, I was just talking about Tracer Barrage, but I don't think I need it because I think Raging Inferno is the better option here. This gives me another, another Arcana choice that's effective against the Wind Elemental enemies. Owie, 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 owie. So, ultimately, yeah. I think I made the right move there. Now I'll probably switch back to Bolt Claymore for the final for the trina, for the final trial hallway, but Oh, oh, this is a nice 
this easy one. Nothing wrong with a little extra resource. But some of the other signature choices that I've kind of re that I've kind of really fallen fallen in love with myself would be things like, you know, Obsidian Cascade, I think is really good. Cool. Oh, screw you. Um, ball Lightning is really good for single target damage. Um, Aqua Breaker tends to be really good, really good for both crowd control and single target. Don't feel too bad if you have a hard time dodging those attack patterns. Those are intentionally supposed to be difficult to dodge. So the reason why I don't think the signature is making a huge difference in this run is because you have something that's very good at focusing down damage on a single target already. And I know I've said that already, and some people are going to be like, Oh, Dark Sage, you're just repeating yourself. <laughs> Shut up. Alright, we're going to get rid of Bearhead for a luxury handbag. But yeah, again, I don't I don't mean to make it sound like I'm just spending my whole time laying into someone for making di choices different from the ones I would make. Like I said, that's part of what makes this game really good is that there are multiple choices to be made and there aren't necessarily any wrong answers. So, a couple of things to uh, to hopefully help out, since, since we, are, we are talking about a newer player who is a little bit unsure of themselves. So, one thing that you're going to want that you're going to want to do, and it sounds like you've already been doing it, is spend time learning the different enemy patterns. Every enemy has a sequence of movements that's that they're going to do, and knowing what they're going to do and when they're going to do it is important. And like I said, it sounds like you've already been working on that, so kudos to you. You don't need me to go any further with that explanation. I'm going to wait and see if he has anything a little bit more worthwhile at the end.
There we go. And I think just to make sure that I'm on the safe side, eh, it's grab a healing potion. But that also has the added benefit of improving my damage thanks to the mighty elixir. Uh, Dark Sage is called the Elixir of Might. Thank you, I had forgotten for a moment. I goddamn hate his signature. There we go. And Dice of the Nemesis doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Oops, I forgot to switch back to Bolt Claymore. That was definitely something I was going to do. Okay. Um, yeah, I think so, just because things are getting a little bit faster paced and it's harder to it can be very difficult to... Yeah. So, just a little word of advice for using Bolt Claymore. You definitely want to... You definitely want to hit them with the... With the detonation and not necessarily the bolt itself. There we go. Alright. Let's see, I don't think we have anything that's really going to be all that crazy effective against... <clears throat> yeah, I think I am going to switch back to this, though. Okay, so one thing I won't need anymore is that. I need a heavy travel jacket. And I won't need that, so give me the eyeglasses. Alright. Think we're set. Okay, Dice of the Nemesis just took over there. And there we go. Oh. Yeah, trust me when I say that you don't want to learn from the Prometheus school of running away from danger. And there we go. Like I said, there's a <clears throat> there's a lot of things kind of 
being carried by the Fueled Berserk stone shot strategy, which I have no issue with. If you can make Fueled Berserk work, then hey, more power to you. A lot of people really like the Fueled Berserk stone fist strategy, and you know, it's fine. I have no issue with it. I'm kind of more of a fan of Fueled, Ber Fueled Berserk and... <clears throat> trying to remember which one it is. See, I kind of like Field Berserk and Ice Dagger myself, because you get so much movement while using the Ice Dagger, and you can just kind of zip around the battlefield while just constantly stabbing like a completely over... <laughs> completely overbearing and over-caffeinated murder hobo. It's... it's pretty great, but also hard to control, so... Take it with a grain of salt, that's just my way of thinking. Anyways, again, I apologize if that came off as being overly critical, I want to thank Mercurius for stepping up to the plate to offer a build. I'm always grateful for people doing things like that, and hey, if you have anything else you want me to try, feel free to put it on the table, even if it is just a theory craft. So remember, the links to my social media, and most importantly, my Discord, are going to be in the description below, so thank you to Mercurius again, thank you to everyone else for being willing to share your free time with me, and I will catch you guys in another video. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you.